to girl madam k whatever you want to say but really it's just madam k Welcome back to Madam K Production. What is Poppin? Production Crew? Welcome back. And if you're not a part of the production crew, all you have to do to be poppin, to be fly, like us, is subscribe, and we'll wait. Take your time. Number four, all you gotta do is click that subscribe button, click turn on the post notifications, click, and you'll be notified every time I post a video every other day. Just so you're aware, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And it's gonna keep going. Did I say that right? Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and this is gonna keep going like that in a cycle every other day. And for this video, you already know that today I'll be showing you how to make this cute white dress. Literally, this cost me with 10, 11 dollars. All you need is a men's t-shirt from Walmart. Yup, 10, 11 dollars. Um, I ended up getting a 2X. Um, you it is for you. It depends on how long or short you want the dress, as well as your size. So make sure you take all that into account when you buy said um shirt and this is actually very very easy the like the hardest or like most annoying part because it's not even hard is all the math that go into it but after the math like it's a breeze it's so easy it looks super cute looks really professional if you follow the steps i give you in this video it says it costs less than twenty dollars twenty dollars yep probably will end up making this dress in a few other colors because i liked it that much without further ado we're gonna get to our two minutes though and you're gonna get into the video okay so today's two minutes is about relationships um as far as i know people my age people i know people i kick with people i talk to we start talking about series it's called relationship goals pastor michael todd really opens your eyes and you look at relationships completely differently it doesn't even have to be like a romantic relationship standpoint it could be platonic relationships it could be family relationships all that but being single is not a curse it could definitely be a blessing living single for a little bit is not that bad baby you really should know yourself and have a strong relationship with god before you try to link with anybody else without further ado though i'm gonna just show y'all this clip that he showed well, i'm gonna just show y'all this clip from i believe it was the first um part of the series definitely i think that y'all should go watch the whole entire series it's very eye opening very helpful i will leave a link in the description to the series and right after the video we're gonna get right into how to make this dress people and things get damaged when we do not have clear aim and what god wants us to have in relationship many of us are products of people shooting and trying to have relationship without proper aim proper goals, things that were the standard for our lives that were set by God. And so I want us to go to the beginning today because it's one of those things that I start to look at that a target needs to be standing still. And if you're using culture as the barometer of what relationships should look like, that's a moving target. Like relationship says marriage looks like this, in one decade then it looks like this in another decade it's we're supposed to be like this this is what dating now we have netflix and chill you don't even have to be committed to anybody to cross the line into private areas oh, y'all came to be fake this morning <laughs> what i came to do is dispel the enemy that hides in darkness and to bring light to every person that's listening what God wants for every single one of us is for us to have relationships, but we have to have a goal that is aimed at something that is stable. And let me submit to you that the only thing that is unchangeable, unmoving, unwavering is the word of God. 
See, Isaiah tells us like this in Isaiah 40. It says that, that, that the, the grass will wither and the flower will fade, but the word of God will stand everlasting. So the first thing you want to do is measure your waist and make sure that you don't pull the measuring tape too tight because you still want to have space to breathe and move as you finish. After you measure your waist, you want to get a pen and stick it right where you want your waistband to start. We will use this when we start measuring everything out just to make sure that everything is placed in the correct spot. And yes, I got this plastic Walmart bag on my head. I had to multitask, have the deep condition, and make this video at the same time. And as Auntie Tab would say, that's my business. But the next thing you want to go ahead and do is measure the width of your shirt so now we can finally do our calculations. Now it's time for the calculations. Sorry if you can't see for real, but we're going to keep it pushing. So you're going to take the width of the shirt and times it by 2 because it's in the front and the back. And I ended up with 56 for mine. And then you're going to minus your waist measurement. Mine was 30, so I took 30 away. And then whatever number you get for that, you're going to divide it by 3 because it's 3 parts to the shirt. The two front panels and then the back part. Get it? Got it? Good. And the number that I ended up with was 8.6. And so I just routed that down to eight. Okay, so let me break this down to y'all. It's three panels on this shirt. One and two, the two front panels, and then the back panel. We are going to make squares on each panel to help us make the pleats. The width of each square needs to add up to whichever number you just got. We're gonna get more into the squares and how that all works when we get there. Don't worry, this is all gonna work out. Just bear with me and pay attention. But right now, what we're gonna do is turn the shirt inside out and mark where we put that pin at, where we wanted the waistband to start so we can take it out. So starting one inch away from the buttonholes, I found the midpoint of my first front panel and I marked that. Now you want to start one inch away from the left side of the midpoint and measure a four inch line. Now I measure down four inches because I want to, my waistband to be four inches thick. You can do however many inches you want for this part. It just all depends on how thick you want your waistband to be. So for mine, I ended up with a four by four inch square. Now you can do the same thing that you just did, but this time to the right side of the midpoint. So one inch away from the midpoint, I measured four inches to the right. And then I did four inches down, and then I just made a four by four square right there. So on this first panel, each of my squares were four inches long at the top. So four plus four equals my magic number, eight. Now in your case, you might have a rectangle and a square because you might have a number like nine. So if you split nine, then you might do a five inch rectangle and a four by four square you know what I'm saying so it don't have to be two squares or two rectangles just as long as whatever number that you had so mine was eight as long as whatever number that you had is adding up to the number of inches that your squares or rectangles are across you should be straight so now you're going to do the same exact thing that you just did on this panel to the other front panel after I did that, I just folded over the other panel so that I could mark where it was supposed to start on the back just so everything is looking the same because we don't want it to start in a different spot because it's not going to look crisp and professional like we want it to. So make sure you turn it over so you can mark where your waistband is supposed to stop and start. Now we're going to do the same thing we do on the front two panels. We're going to go one inch from the left of the midpoint, one inch from the right of the midpoint, and do four inches each way. 
you know i'm really hoping that this is all making sense to y'all it's making sense to me and it's really not that hard to do just make sure whatever you do again that the length of your squares across the top or rectangles is adding up to your magic number and you should be gucci oh and a side note remember if i said say you did a square and a rectangle and you did one four inches um on the top and then the other one five inches on the top well make sure that it's all the same length because that's the length of your waistband going up and down so mine was four so i made sure everything was four inches up and down if yours is three make sure that number is staying consistent it might change on the top because you got an odd number, but just make sure it's always staying the same up and down. Now, whether you did squares or rectangles, it don't matter. All together, you should have six shapes, two on each panel. Now, this part was a little tricky, but once you get the hang, it's real easy. So, you're going to do this to all six squares, by the way. So, you're going to take one square and match up the two side lines. So, the right sides of the shirt so you're on the wrong side of the shirt right now so you want to match up the two side lines and the tricky part is you can't see the two side lines to match them up because they're on two different sides now so you're going to put the pin through where you think the two side lines match up and then check the front and the back to make sure that the pin is going through each of the lines If after you put the pin through and it's not going through both of your marked lines, you just gonna have to take it out, readjust, and keep adding it back in and taking it out until it's going through both lines. And yes, this part is kind of tedious and it takes a little time, but after you finish, I promise you it's gonna turn out so nice. And now it's time to sew. And this part is actually very, very easy. Really, the hardest part is always the pattern making. It's always the prep. And the sewing part is a breeze. As long as you got the pattern making part right, the sewing part is going to be a breeze. So make sure you got your thread that match whatever color shirt you got. In my case, it's white. And now what you're going to do is just sew down the lines where you just put those pins. So for every square, you're going to sew down the line of pins. Boom, done. Move to the next one. You do it six times. It don't take that long. And then I also took in my sleeves. I didn't do this part on camera. My bad. But it's pretty self-explanatory. Take it in however much you want to take the sleeves in. And then sew down that and cut off the excess. And to be honest with you, it was really cute actually with the um, big sleeves. But it's not the look I was going for. I don't know what happened to the video footage of this dress, but that's neither here nor there. I really did like this dress. It turned out just how I wanted it. I'm so happy with the results. Bow! That's it. That's all. It's just as just that easy. I really do enjoy this dress. And for it to only have been $11, I think that this was a huge deal because it does not, one, it does not take that much time. To make this dress yes this was my first time making a dress so i did struggle on some parts but after doing it once i feel like i can do it again multiple times in a breeze it's so easy to make it's super cute and i definitely will be making more in other colors and i told y'all i was coming to diys i am and as soon as the goodwill the salvation army the thrift shop as soon as all of that open back up i am on that because that is like <sighs> it's the place to be for a girl like me i can make something out of nothing baby I can take a little toe up, raggedy, ugly, crazy looking. I can make it into anything. I can make it slap. So I'm definitely coming with the DIYs for y'all. Even heavier once the thrift shops and stuff open back up. I know so like people out there with our sewing machine. So once that open back up, I will be back with a lot of the no so because I know everybody don't got a machine. And everybody don't want a machine. So I definitely have a lot of no so ideas, but I need the thrift shop to 
open back up because I have ideas for that. So don't worry, that's coming too. <laughs> yeah, but really, that's it. Y'all already know the drill. So your mom take that to us, take us to friends, so everybody you know about my Kevin Productions. We can get it popping. Period. While you're here, make sure you <laughs> subscribe. 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 Comment down below other DIYs that I want to see me do because I can get that crack for y'all. Y'all already know. Make sure to tag me because I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! But yeah, I think it's time to go. Bye. It's time to go.